In this video, I'll teach you all about the effort-driven feature in Microsoft Project. You know, the effort-driven feature in Microsoft Project is another one of those confusing features in the software. But in this video, I hope to make its functionality clear to you and to teach you when to use it and when not to use it. So let's get started. What is effort-driven? In Microsoft Project, the effort-driven status of a task determines how the software will respond when you add or remove resources to a task to which you previously assigned one or more resources. The nice thing about effort-driven is that you can designate each task individually as either effort-driven or non-effort-driven. The default setting, by the way, for every task is effort-driven unless you say so otherwise. When you add a helper to an effort-driven task, Microsoft Project will hold the remaining work constant for the task and then it splits the remaining work proportionately for each resource based on their unit's values. On fixed units and fixed work tasks, adding a helper to the task will shorten its duration. On a fixed duration task, on the other hand, adding a helper will not shorten the duration, but it will split the remaining work proportionately between the assigned resources. When you add a helper to a non-effort driven task, Microsoft Project does not shorten the duration of the task. Instead, the software increases the total work on the task for each helper you add. Driving a school bus route is a good example of a non-effort driven task. Adding another school bus driver to the school bus will not shorten the duration of the bus trip but it will increase the total work for the two bus drivers. And by the way, just so you know, it's not possible to make a fixed work task non-effort driven. That's because by its very nature, a fixed work task must always be effort driven. If you want to change the effort-driven status for any task, there's two ways to do this. One way is to display the split screen or task entry view. Then in the task form, you can select or deselect the effort-driven checkbox. Another way to do this is to double-click the task then in the task information dialog to click the advanced tab. On the advanced page of the dialog again you can select or deselect the effort driven checkbox. So let's go ahead and take a look now at a demo of how to use effort driven scheduling in Microsoft Project. In this sample project notice how the tasks in the first section have various task types, and all of them are effort driven. Notice that in the second section of the project, the tasks have various task types, and that most of them are not effort driven. So let's see how effort driven scheduling works in Microsoft Project. I'm going to display the split screen view called the task entry view. The first task, please notice, is fixed units, effort driven. I'm going to give Luke a helper. Her name is Bree. Bree will be helping out full time on this task, so I put in a unit's value of 100%. When I click the OK button, notice that Microsoft Project shortened the duration to five days, 
and notice how it split the 80 hours of work proportionately between Luke and Bree. Let's go to the next task. Notice that this task is fixed work. Notice also how the effort-driven checkbox is selected and then this option is grayed out. That's because by its very nature, fixed work tasks must always be effort-driven. I'm going to give Josh a part-time helper. His name is Eric. Eric cannot work full-time on this task because he's working part-time in another project. So I'll assign Eric to work 50% units, about four hours a day. When I click the OK button, you're going to see something unusual. Microsoft Project will shorten the duration of the task, but it's shortened to 6.67 days. And the work is proportionately distributed between Josh and Eric. This is based on their units values. So Josh receives 53 and a third hours, while Eric receives only 26 and two-thirds. Josh gets two-thirds of the work. Eric gets one-third of the work. That's the proportional split that Microsoft Project makes when you add a helper to an effort-driven task. Let's go to the next task. Notice this task now is fixed duration, but it is effort-driven. I'm going to give Terry a helper. Her name is Karen. Karen will be working full-time on this task. However, because this task is fixed duration, the duration will not change. Instead, watch what happens. When I click OK, the duration remains at 10 days. However, the 80 hours of work originally assigned to Terry is now evenly distributed between her and Karen. It reduced the workload for Terry by giving her a helper. Let's take a look now at the task Implement 1. This task is fixed units, effort driven. I'm going to give Bethany a helper. The helper is Lex. And Lex will be working full time. When I click the OK button, you would expect the duration to change to five days and the 80 hours of work to be evenly distributed 40 and 40 between Bethany and Lex. But watch what happens instead. When I click OK, whoops, the duration is seven and a half days. The work is distributed 60 for Bethany and 20 for Lex. Something went wrong here. Here's what went wrong. There was already actual work done on this task. In fact, let me bring the Gantt bar into view. Notice here this uh, blue stripe, that's the progress line. And we can see that the job is two-thirds done. Let's see exactly how Microsoft Project distributed the work. So I right-clicked in the task form pane and I'm choosing the work set of details. Here's what I want you to notice. Bethany had already performed 40 hours of actual work. That left 40 as remaining work for her. So when we gave her the helper, Bethany gets 20, Lex gets 20 of the remaining work. So the 60 hours for Bethany is 40 hours of actual work plus 20 hours of remaining work and for Lex, zero hours of actual work and 20 hours of remaining work. Now you can see how effort-driven scheduling works when a task is in progress. Now let's take a look at non-effort-driven scheduling. On this task, notice the task type is fixed units. Notice the task is not effort-driven. If I give Luke a helper, and that's Bree, 
and I assign Bree to work full time or a unit's value of 100%, Microsoft Project will not shorten the duration of the task. Instead, what it'll do is it will give Luke his original 80 hours and it'll give Bree 80 hours as well. This is similar to the school bus driver example I gave you in my PowerPoint presentation. When I go to the next task, Build 2, I want you to notice this task is fixed work, and there the effort-driven checkbox is selected and it's grayed out. You can never make a fixed work task non-effort driven. Don't even try, because it won't work. So let's go to the task test two. This task, please notice, is fixed duration and it's non-effort driven. Because it's fixed duration, we know that the duration will not be shortened. When we give Terry a helper, and her helper again is Karen, with Karen working full time, Microsoft Project will not shorten the duration. Instead, what it will do is it will give Terry her original 80 hours of work and now her helper will also get 80 hours of work. And again, this example is just like the story I told you about the school bus drivers in my PowerPoint presentation. So there you have it. That's how effort-driven scheduling actually works in Microsoft Project. Well. Now you know that effort-driven scheduling determines what happens in Microsoft Project when you add helpers to a task or you remove resources from a task that already has two or more resources assigned. I sure hope you found this video to be helpful. If so, please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I trust you'll want to subscribe and click that notifications button. And as always, I'll see you in my next video.